Colorado looks like this, and the Front Range looks like this. Now considering the 10 most populated cities are here, and the connecting infrastructure looks like this, actually more like this, it's no wonder why people want this. Front range passenger rail will provide an opportunity to a high speed rail passenger rail across the front range with the modern rail of the train. The new opportunities from the Chile Festival in Cuba chart a new path forward to meet the transportation needs of tomorrow. In order to understand as much as we could about this proposal, we put together a small team to figure out three important things. Does Colorado want this? How does a passenger rail go from proposal to reality? And what concerns do people have? But we already have public transportation in Colorado. Do we really need this $3.2 billion train project? Well, we went on a small trip to see what Colorado's transportation is currently like and to learn more about our state's commuters. For this first part of a three-part documentary, we went on on the purpose of understanding whether or not Coloradans want this train, interviewing everybody involved with this project. We started from southern Fort Collins, heading south to Boulder, following the proposed route of the passenger rail. In order to make this trip in one day, we had to start at 6 a.m. Morgan Treat, web design major, Julian Haynes, journalism major, Catherine Shadig, forestry major, Victoria Flores, journalism major, and cameraman Jacob Brown, film major. It might be clear that none of us were experts on trains and no one really knew much about this train project. So, what is the train project? And it was created in order to facilitate the development of a new passenger rail corridor around the Front Range, uh, Front Range region. This is Andy Carsane, member of the Front Range Passenger Rail Board, explaining what the train is. The district's mission is to design and build, operate, and maintain passenger rail system along the Front Range. And when we're talking about passenger rail, it's different than what we're used to here in Colorado with rail projects. And passenger rail is called an intercity passenger rail, which means it connects major markets, not just connecting metro corridor or metro area. We are developing a, a passenger rail system that connects the cities along a region with faster speeds, different train sets, uh, fewer stations, and um, in longer distances than are normally associated with what we're used to here in Colorado when we talk about rail service. This is Nancy Bird. So here's our handy dandy little map. Director of communications on the board. She explains where the train will go. It's also on our website. But it is um, the corridor, well, the, the stops, there was nine stops. So it'd be Fort Collins, Loveland, Longmont, Boulder, then Denver, which is nice because it'll go into Union Station. And then you could hop on the RTD light rail and get to DIA. So you can really be anywhere in, in a matter of you know minutes. And then south, it goes to South Denver, Castle Rock, and then Colorado Springs and Pueblo. You'll notice that our corridor, or actually our district goes uh, state border. Uh, so we have uh, visions to bring it on up into Wyoming and down in, to New Mexico down the road. And this will help Amtrak with all their connectivity throughout the nation as well. So it's really all about connectivity. Basically, the Front Range Passenger Rail is a passenger rail service going from Fort Collins to Pueblo, making stops in Loveland, Longmont, Boulder, Denver, Castle Rock, Colorado Springs, and Pueblo, with future plans to go up to Wyoming and down to New Mexico. Okay, now let's discuss public transportation in general. Denver has a pretty robust public transportation network, but a lot of people would agree that it isn't enough. Not to mention, the rest of the Front Range has barely any other options than buses or cars. In other cities around the US, public transportation has a lot more coverage and a lot more ridership. The best city being New York, which not only integrates public transportation within its communities, but connects them with the rest extremely efficiently. 
In general, however, Denver is a microcosm of the problem with transportation in America. In places like Japan, South Korea, France, Germany, and places with the highest quality public transportation, there isn't any need for a car. In America, and with no exception Colorado, you absolutely need a car. This train, however, would be a step in the direction of options for commuters. Nancy talked about the uh, probably the biggest uh, opportunity benefit that we have that we speak to people around. And that's the connectivity. We're talking about building a passenger rail system that connects these cities, these nine areas around the region. We are talking about developing a new way of connecting riders, business, commerce, tourism, higher education, you know, students, military, all of these folks could be possible future riders that can benefit from increased connectivity, not only from all of these, you know, station to station, one of these nine stations to another station, but once you arrive at the station, first and last mile connectivity from a new station, building in what existing transit services are available, expanding those and creating a value to those existing services within those interregional areas to expand that out into a more holistic look at how we connect people throughout this region. It would be for families and commuters who live in the growing Front Range. It would also get people off the road, which in the Front Range is notoriously failing to provide a safe and efficient way to travel. So we have this direct one-to-one -one relationship between removing people off of the road moving a vehicle off of the road, which decreases the chance that vehicle is gonna to get to a crash, it decreases congestion, increases better air quality, which is a major consideration, especially up here. Vehicles that are driving on the roads today contribute the most to the greenhouse gases uh, in the transportation sector and passenger rail and freight rail contributes less than 1%. I think the train too, to me, it's, it's a relaxing way to travel. Um, you can meet people, you can have um, efficient use of your time, you can study, you can, you know, read a book, whatever. You, you don't have to drive and, you know, get angry at the car next to you or <laughs> whatever that is. It's also safer. The Colorado Department of Transportation states 716 traffic related deaths occurred in Colorado in 2023. And from the trend over the last 10 years, that number is only rising. But one of the main reasons for car being king in Colorado is speed. Would this train be fast enough to persuade people to keep their cars at home? Because we are also required by law to create a system that is comparable with the travel times by car from Denver to Fort Collins. Yeah. So I am arguing that we are already competitive with that like on day yeah. one of the service and it will just get better. So. Considering it takes three to four hours to get from Fort Collins to Pueblo by car, and the train would be traveling about 79 to 90 miles per hour, they're close. The train wins, however, being potentially 10 minutes faster. It would be about 20 minutes faster from Fort Collins to Boulder, which we are now arriving at. Hopping onto the RTD bus, we headed towards Denver. Along the way, we wanted to see how the actual riders of Colorado's public transportation felt about both what we have and what we may build. While riding the bus, we interviewed everybody who was willing to see what they thought about public transportation in Colorado in general, to see their experience with RTD, and to see why they were riding the bus today. Do you take the, the bus uh, regularly? Um, no, I don't. Today is an oddity, and this week is because I have an architecture camp at CU Denver. Cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. Your name? So, I'm Shayan. Okay. Shayan, uh, I moved to Colorado like uh, two and a half years back. Okay. So, I've been working in uh, working at DISH, DISH Network in Denver. Okay. So I commute daily from Boulder to Denver. Yeah. So I appreciate the work they like, put in, and uh, the schedule is usually like good and uh, the buses are on in time, most, most cases. So you have some disruption now and then, but then it's not too much. Like you can use public transport, it's 
comfortable and like I would say except for a few cases, most cases on time. Okay. Not yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah some crazy on them? Yeah. Have you been on a train before? Yes, so I do take the A line from Denver to the uh, airport mm -hmm. at times. So like but then I, I have taken the D line and the other stuff as well. I have not felt like it's too safe after a certain hours, so that's something they need to work on. But then they, but then like, I feel trains are a bit more like less accident prone or safer, or like less service disruption unless there is something planned. So probably you do have the option like I go with the train instead of a bus. Why not just drive all the way? Well, I mean, like downtown area. You gotta pay for the parking fees, and you know, actually, sometimes like bus is a lot faster than driving down by myself when it comes to like around 8 to 9 a.m. So, this is a lot. Well, I mean, I can just concentrate on my stuff while I'm being uh, transported, I don't need to drive myself, so I, I can use the time. So yeah, I, I think this is pretty neat, you know. So, you're definitely, it seems like to me that you are a pretty big fan of how the system is already. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm from South Korea, so, I mean, public transportation in South Korea is awesome. Well, in Denver area, well, we have some, like, decent uh, public transportation, but I mean, my take is that, uh, like, it's less reliable. If I need to go A to B, I, I cannot be assured that I can be on time. Your experience been, like, on the bus so far? Um, it's been, I'd say it's been good because it's like convenient, but mm -hmm. sometimes it can be a little like unsafe, like sometimes people are like a little bit sus, you know, yeah. like someone has to get kicked off the bus, and like mm -hmm. I haven't been taking the bus for very long, mm -hmm. so like the fact that I already kind of like felt that is like right. a little bit like unsettling, like I can only imagine like taking the bus for like forever, gotcha, and, you know, all that, but yeah, well, well there you go, those are two good Thank you. <laughs> It would seem that the riders of the RTD bus from Boulder to Denver are a pretty big fan of how things are now. Uh, and I would agree, our experience was definitely the best from Boulder to Denver. It was the most convenient, most comfortable, and most efficient. But what do riders think about the upcoming train project? Have you heard of, there's a proposed uh, passenger rail train? Oh, uh, okay, so I have read that on Twitter. Like, but then what I heard is like they have postponed the plan or that it's not going in soon. So the the next thing that we'll see is in 2026, right now, they said that we'll do, we'll be voting on a sales tax okay. to help fund it. Okay. Do you think that's something you'd vote for? I really do not have much idea about it, like, so I really can't comment on that. Okay. So I'm not too aware on that at that point. Yeah, so yeah. So I'm not like tell you things that I do not know about. Sure, sure. You feel like you would need more information before you're comfortable like casting a vote in either direction about Yeah, true, absolutely. Tax. About uh, there's a proposed passenger rail. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Well, that would be to start really with. nice because my wife is working in Port Poland, so she needs to drive down to CSU. Mm. But like, well, I, I feel like really, really good thing about this bus particularly is I feel a lot safer than train because uh, we have driver right there and then he's checking all the like fares that you know like if you take the RTD in the downtown like there are many people who does some pay and then sometimes they like smoke weed in the train like that so mm -hmm. I feel unsafe that yeah do you think the the train would be safe I, I, I don't know there's supposed to be a sales tax that's gonna be in ballots in 2026 mm -hmm. um, that's gonna help fund the train do you okay. think that's something you'd vote for so that will be all applied to the Denver metro area in general um, like a state tax well I mean if that is helping public transportation I'm, I'm down for it because it will reduce the number of cars on the street and you know, uh, air quality will be improved. I mean, all, all, all will be nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I prefer bus for now. If they're, well, I mean, the safety isn't there, then I, mean, I would prefer bus. And, well, I mean, to be honest, like, the timing wise, um, bus is a more accurate, more punctual in Denver area. Mm. Um, so that's kind of like weird, I and mean, we might assume that train might be more accurate, but buses are more accurate and on time, mm. so it's more reliable for now. 
so I think that that must be something that we have to think about because like if this is used for the mainly for the community then you might want to on time your, your company in your office by the time that you expect to be but like if you're late unexpectedly then how, how come you can't just take this uh, train or bus uh, routinely so I think that is important because like there is no way other than using that transit app you don't know if bus is being delayed for some reason and there is no way that you can figure that out so um, you, you want to be more on time routine basis so I think that needs to be something that we have to know that we will not be laid out that's for the work yeah okay so just to kind of wrap up, um, if the front range passenger rail does come to be, the, you, you need it to be safer and maybe reliable. Right, right. Yeah, reliable timing. Reliable for that, because you already appreciate how yeah, timely yeah. the bus is and yeah, safe. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. You. It would seem that Colorado's commuters need the train to be safe, convenient, and reliable. And to give RTD credit, it is already all those things. But while we were filming, we uh, the, the bus driver noticed, and we were able to track the bus driver down for an interview about his unique perspective of RTD, the buses, and the upcoming train project. <laughs> Everybody needs to get around in the complex world that we live in mm. and not everybody can afford a private vehicle. Mm. So the biggest benefit is that we transport the public, everybody. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a necessary requirement for public transportation in cities. I think it's a great benefit. I think here in Denver we have one of the best public transportations in the nation. We compete with San Francisco and Seattle and New York and Boston and people like that. I mean, there are a lot of good systems, but we have one of the best right here. Yeah. What do you think about it makes it the best? Frequency of buses, you know, um, reasonable reliability uh, will get you there safely. There's a, a plan, a possible plan in the works for doing a front range passenger rail so a train running from Fort Collins to Pueblo. Um, do you? Th what, what are your thoughts on that? Have you heard of it? Haven't haven't heard about it. Okay. Uh, but I don't follow the trains too much. My preference is for the buses. Bus mm -hmm. routes are much more flexible. Uh, I think there's always going to be a need for buses to get passengers to the train, <laughs> to the train <laughs> station if people commute by train. So there's room for both of us. But my preference, my personal preference, is for the buses. We're much more flexible. We can get you a lot more places and get you closer to your destination, you know, and we can pick you up closer to wherever you live and get you to your destination easier than a train can. A train can't, it has to stick on a fixed route. It has to stay where the rails are and we can move better. So yeah. my, my thoughts about trains are they have certain limitations. Uh, they're extremely efficient. I love that about trains. You know, my preference is for buses. Do you hear people talk about taking your bus and connecting to trains um, oh, all already? The time. All the time. Oh yeah. Yeah, I want to ask, how often do you see like um, regular commuters who, who are using the bus every day, twice a day, like you mentioned? It depends on the route, okay? Uh, yeah, our FF5 route runs between downtown Boulder Station and Anschutz Medical Campus. Those are all regulars. Uh, that's a fun route to drive for me because I'm a people person. I like to get to know my passengers and wish them all a good morning and then things like that. And, you know, and people seem to like that. They respond well to me in that regard. So. They're, those are all regular commuters who go every day to work mm -hmm. and come home every day from work. So, Would you say then that there's um, an opportunity on buses to kind of establish a community that might not be available on a train then? Since there's not like a bus driver yes. present with you every day? Yes, yes, I would say that. Um, you guys are students. Mm -hmm. Recently, 
recently I drove the FF5, which runs out to Anschutz campus, and I had a young lady who approached me. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> She'd been riding for years, and uh, every day, and I she always got a good morning. And she asked if she, she came up to me and asked if she could take my picture, and I said, sure. <coughs> and uh, she explained to me that she was thankful, grateful. Uh, she'd been working on her PhD, and she was defending her thesis, and she wanted to put my picture in her thesis. And she said that she gave it a little explanation, said that uh, this guy enabled me to work an hour a day on my thesis, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because he was driving and I didn't have to deal with traffic. And uh, she would sit down and open up her computer and work on her thesis or whatever. She said she drew little angel wings <laughs> on, the, on the picture, and uh, she said the people who were she was defending her thesis for loved it, <laughs> loved it. So another good story, you know, we get yeah, positive you. feedback, and that's what's great. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. that. That's a wonderful story. Sure. I was Thank you so much again, Bus Driver Bill, and everybody else who uh, let us interview on that bus. I know it was the morning, but uh, it is very clear that uh, public transportation is very important in Colorado and in general for connecting communities and for getting people from point A to point B. Uh, but yeah, this was super fun. This is only part one of three. We're only a third of the way through the journey. In part two, we answer more questions about how the train uh, will become real and uh, what are the next steps the train needs to actually get on the tracks and start transporting people. In part three, we go into a lot more of the considerations and the concerns that need to be made with a project like this. We interview some small towns. Uh, the mayor of Berthoud, he's super cool. Um, we talk about considerations that need to be made and, and a lot more. So stay tuned and yeah, subscribe if you want to see more.